Hello, welcome everyone. It's Meredith. I'm here with our weekend reading. Um, this is for Friday the 23rd, Saturday the 24th, Sunday the 25th of November 2018. I hope you all had an amazing Thanksgiving if you were celebrating. <clears throat> and you're all out standing in line on Black Friday. <laughs> no, I hope not. I'm not doing it. Um, Okay, let's take a look at the energy running through the weekend. Sort of the foundation of the reading here, we have the death card. Okay, uh, so Friday we have a full moon in Gemini. And the death card is all about endings and beginnings. So full moon energy is great for that. So if there's something you want to phase out or something you want to phase into your life. This is a great time for um, manifesting. So do what you do. Do the magic you do to manifest. And well, let's see how this card connects to the rest of the reading. We have the Eight of Coins, Eight of Pentacles. So this is kind of the workaday card. It's the um, kind of keep your head down, keep going. <laughs> But also use your talent and your skill toward self-mastery. Um, this card also, in combination with the death card, would encourage would encourage us to master our craft, master our plan, goal, dream for our life. So this is keeping your eye on your intention, your attention on your intention. So it's a perfect pairing with the death card if you are focused on making changes or uh, not just making changes though my feeling here is that we're all expanding into new realms of experience because for weeks now we've been getting messages about crossing a threshold into a new realm of experience and of course we can't take um, we can't take pieces and parts with us, the things that we've outgrown, the things that are no longer comfortable, the things that no longer serve us are not coming across that threshold with us. We need discernment and experience. We need our talent and our skill to choose wisely for ourselves as we as we are in the now and as we consider our potential oncoming. So the eight is a great card to come alongside the death card. And again, if we're going to use the full moon energy for manifestation, There'll be choices that we have to make um, about how we are experiencing this moment right now and what we want to continue experiencing in the oncoming. So let's see what goes with it. Yeah, Queen of Coins. So, Kings and Queens, you know it. They're all about self-mastery. She's the mother of the material. Uh, she's absolutely a manifestation card here. So this also pairs quite nicely with the Death card. And if you'll notice, they're both... Well, this one's really looking at what he's doing, so that's good. His attention's on his intention, and she is looking toward the death card. Um, I love that she's lit up with flowers. That represents bounty to me, abundance. Um, so she's, she's keeping a good eye on things. You know, and we have two coin cards here. So this is all earth energy, and it appears to... Uh, I don't like to put time on anything, most especially with tarot card readings. However, the the coins have um, a reputation for mm, a slower energy. But I also see it as a more grounded energy. So this is something um, of the miraculous and etheric coming into the physical. So this is the manifestation process. This is worthy of celebration here. It's kind of exciting, even though it's um, it's a quiet excitement. We'll put it that way. Yeah, and then we have the Hierophant. So this is faith, keeping the faith. Our faith for what we're doing on our eight, what the queen is helping us realize. Our faith is the fuel for the... Um, for exactly what we desire to materialize. And the Hierophant is also about a deepening and expanding commitment. Now that can be to yourself, to your project, 
to or within your relationships because he's also a card of um, tradition, education, reevaluating one's values. So we may be taking a look at that again. This is more discernment with the death card as we're coming across this threshold to a new realm of experience. What exactly do we want to bring with us? What are we leaving behind? Yeah, then we have the Five of Swords. Oh, happy day. <laughs> the Five of Swords is, it's one of those arguing with yourself cards. Sometimes it's arguing with other people, usually a family member um, or someone very, very close. Um, but this is an inner argument. This is the need for discernment. So this would be the one card that destabilizes this process here. And it could be us getting caught up in um, yeah, an internal battle. Struggling with our discernment, we'll say. Next card. Knight of Coins. More coins. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race. But you know, on this card, and in this deck, he's not standing still. In most tarot decks, the Knight of Coins or Pentacles is on like a plow horse or a draft horse. You know, one of those big sturdy farm horses. And he's standing still, but he's looking ahead. And this knight is also looking ahead, but his horse is um, ready for action. He's taking a step forward. So this tells me that we're closer than we think. And some of you are tired of hearing this, but hang in there. Don't give up now. Don't lose your faith now. Um, there is something materializing for us, and it's something that we've, <clears throat> excuse me, dreamed about, prayed for. It is coming into being for us. The inner argument would be the doubt for that process. But here in this deck, we see this particular night, Mr. Slow and Steady, Mr. Spreadsheet, Mr. I've got it all planned out. He's actually about to charge. So consider that. That's worth keeping the faith for. If you see the Knight of Pentacles in motion, <laughs> you definitely want to hang in there. Um, okay. <laughs> That's kind of funny. All right. Last one here. Four of Cups. Yeah. That pairs pretty well with this Five of the Swords because, you know, the Four of Cups is actually quite a gift. Uh, we have a cosmic gift on offer in the card, and we have three previous uh, cosmic gifts sitting before us, and this guy isn't looking at any of them. Interesting, though, <laughs> he's looking to the heavens, but not at this cup. Um, he's sort of off in the direction of the death card and the queen. The hierophant appears to be looking down on him. He could actually be the one handing this cup, you know? Um, so if you just look at the artwork, that tells the tale very well. This could be us. And these five swords, this is what this guy's pondering. He's thinking about all the stuff that vexes him. He's thinking about his doubts and his concerns, maybe even his worries. Like, you know, I've spent a lot of time in prayer meditation and I've been seeking enlightenment, and I have had gifts before, but they did not come to fruition, so uh, I'm going to sit here and kind of pout. <laughs> the guy on the Four of Cups is usually pouting. Um, so it's this attitude that creates this mental monkey business over here, which is where a lot of us um, may feel we are at at this time. Um, I've heard from so many that they're tired of waiting. Now, waiting is not something we're meant to be doing anyway. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an illusion. It's, waiting is an illusion. It will keep you stuck. <laughs> so wait for nothing. Keep going. Take some action. Stay connected to your goals, dreams, plans, prayers. Keep the faith. That's the fuel right there. There'll be no sense of waiting for anything if you're doing this. And if you're trusting in your skill and your talent. And again, I understand so many of you are tired of hearing that. You're just, you're worn out from the retrogrades and the eclipses. 
And my guides were telling me while I was shuffling this deck this morning, um, and my guides were telling me from December 5th to, to January 5th, there will be um, a very tangible shift in energy for us. This a sense of a lightness of being is going to gain momentum in that month. And I do believe that there is another eclipse um, happening on the 5th of January. Don't quote me on that. I have to look it up. But I do think there is. It's another eclipse. So it feels like that's the key in the lock and everything changes. But the, the momentum that builds between the 5th of December and the 5th of January may be quite dramatic for many of us. This simultaneous endings and beginnings here on the death card will be uh, perhaps more obvious to us. But coming back to this four, um, some of us do feel disillusioned. Some feel angry, frustrated. <laughs> I've heard it all. Um, I've experienced plenty of it myself and had to do the you know inner spiritual journey work on it. I've had to do this eight of coins myself. I've had to rely on the queen and the hierophant and trust that the knight of coins is actually going to take an action. <laughs> I can be the picture of impatience. <laughs> so I've had these inner arguments and I have felt like this pouty guy here on the four of cups. But coming back around to him, this is a reminder to all of us that the universe does have our back here and it continues to serve up and to offer up the very things we pray for, the enlightenment we seek, and um, the, the co-creative process with the universe is ongoing and that's why these cups keep coming. So every now and then with retrograde energy, with eclipse energy, with uh, emotional triggers, <laughs> healing work that needs to be done, we can feel like none of this is actually functioning or working. And these cards are reminding us that it's always working and it's always working in our favor. So if we come back to a default setting of pure raw love and faith in our process, things do get easier for us. So if we bring compassion and kindness here to our own selves on the five, we don't end up in this position so often on the four. But we we do have, um, oh, my guides are saying this e eternal grace of co-creation with all that is. And it is constantly in motion, even if our perception is set on time and a sense of, oh, I've been waiting for this. So try to eliminate that if possible. Um, surrender to your own faith. Do the work and trust in the process. Cross that threshold and let the universe gift you with what it wishes to gift you with. Okay, we are going to move on now to our... I'm not going to do the angel answers. I'm going to use the, the fortune reading cards today. And let's see what we get. So this is your opportunity to ask a question. But I will use these as clarifiers to the reading. Okay, first card. Hmm. Interesting. Look at this. A double dose. <laughs> Another death card. So it is a time of natural transition and transformation. Yes, we are undergoing a transformation. And some of us would like to punch the clock and say, well, when is that going to be done? <laughs> and the answer to that is, how deep is your faith? <laughs> okay. Oh, next card. We get the moon. Perfect, full moon. Um, pay attention to your intuition at this time and move ahead confidently. If we're too much in our thoughts and if we are having an inner argument, we do not hear our intuition so well. So do the work that's necessary. No joke that it's underneath eight. Do the work. Do the work that's necessary to get yourself into the state of being where you are feeling kindness, compassion, temperance, grace, ease, peace, love. And in that energy, your intuition is very clear. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, next card. And when your intuition is nice and clear, it's way easier to be in a state of faith. All right, next 
six card. Key. Ooh, didn't I say? It's like turning the key in the lock. <laughs> New beginnings, directions, and adventures await for those ready to let go of the past. Yes, and that's what's happening over here on the death card. That's the transition. The things that we can't bring us bring with us across that threshold. This is what's falling away. This is the transition that's taking place over here on the death card. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like we need one more. Okay, here it is. We get Dragonfly. Have confidence during this time of great joy, renewal, and connection to spirit. Perfect. Yes. That all speaks for itself quite nicely. All right. Let's do an empowering question card. We haven't done one of these in a few days, so it's time. That's interesting. For those of you who are using that phrase, well, I'm waiting for this or I'm waiting for that, and I'm challenging you to take time out of it <laughs> and go to faith instead, what would I do if I had enough time? What do I do when I have time? What a fantastic card, because there really is no such thing as time. Hmm. Okay, last card, folks. I would change that. What would I do if I had enough faith? What do I do when I have faith? That's how I would change that question. Okay, and our affirmation card for the day from the Notes from the Universe deck. <laughs> Dwell on what you love. Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> okay, that's what I am doing. Asking someone to change is like pruning a tree. Neither will ever be the same again. Scarier still is that you can't quite know in what new directions they'll grow. I wouldn't change a leaf on you, the universe. Yeah, you're perfect right where you are. Blossom where you stand. Keep the faith, folks. There's some interesting stuff in the oncoming. Don't wait for it. Just be in faith for it. Love yourselves, have compassion, be kind to yourselves and everyone else. <laughs> and I know some of you are groaning right now. We don't want to hear this. <laughs> it is a positive message, though. At least consider it when you're arguing with yourself on this Five of Swords and you're deciding, all right, fine, I'll keep my head down, I'll keep going. <laughs> Trust the journey. Have a beautiful weekend, everyone. I'll be back very soon with a new reading. Bye for now.